All right, this question kind of exemplifies one of the biggest changes that I've noticed from the old version of the SAT to the new digital version. Since every question gives us a calculator and a graphing calculator is built into the exam, if we were asked about a system of equations and we're asked to find a, a solution, we're probably just gonna graph it. And so we can do that here. And for most of you, honestly, you're not as good at algebra as you think you are. These kinds of questions, solving them algebraically, requires a lot of steps. And I, I just know, I've worked with enough students that I know that you're gonna mess it up probably, or at least it's gonna take a lot of time. So the graphing is a nice way to do this quickly. So I graph them here for you. And so if I click around, you can kind of see it's close, but the Desmos is gonna, is gonna give you kind of that point of intersection as a highlighted point, so it's easy to find. So in this case, it is seven, negative two. I'm gonna write that down. And what do they want from us? Well, they want the Y value, so we gotta be careful, that's gonna be the negative two, so that means choice A is the answer. So look, that took us, what, 30 seconds? So that's probably the way to do it. Now, if you, of course, if you enter the equation wrong or something, that's gonna cause some problems, but for most equations, it is just gonna work that you can plug it in. However, I will show you the algebra just in case maybe there's a version of this, this question where we can't use the calculator for some reason, you know, something about the wording. Um, if we were to solve this algebraically, our goal would be to eliminate a variable and we would have to multiply one of the equations to do that. So if I multiplied by negative three, that would let me get rid of the x's. And that's just the easiest thing, right? Because it only involves me multiplying by one or one of the equations. Whereas if I try to get rid of the y's, I would need to multiply both of the equations. So that would be a little bit more work. Now, if I do this, right, I'm just going to rewrite what I have. I'd have 6x plus 7y is equal to 28. Now, this is where the mistake tends to happen. We got to multiply that negative 3 into all the parts. So that means the 3 and it means the negative. So negative three times two x is negative six x, which shouldn't surprise us, that's what we wanted. Negative three times two y is negative six y, and negative three times 10 is negative 30. And so when we add these two equations together, the x's cancel, six x minus six x is zero. Seven y minus six y is just one y, and 20 minus 30 is negative two. So it, it, it's not that, hard, right? We kind of just like get the answer, right? So maybe for some of you that's easier than doing the graphing. I, I don't know. It just feels like it's so much easier to mess up algebra. Even if you are confident and know what you're doing, you're just going to be moving fast. There's negatives flying around. You know, distribution is a, is a high risk move in, in algebra. So there's a lot of things to uh, these kinds of systems of equations questions that just could cause problems. And so the graphing solution is probably going to be the least risky for everybody. So now you know both, but I'd probably graph it.